All right, so this video will be about dget function. So dget is one of the database functions in Google Sheets. It can be used to replace a lot of cases when you use VLOOKUP or index match. For example, here to use VLOOKUP to find the price for the stock numbers, I could do equals VLOOKUP, click on the stock number as a lookup value, comma, and then I'm gonna select the table starting from that stock number columns. I would usually lock the range F4 and comma, and then in this range, I would say I want the column number. So column number in this case would be one, two, three, four. Fourth is the price, and then this would be an exact match zero. So that gets me 130, which is the price for this item number right here. So 430, 130. Now, if you don't know about VLOOKUP, don't worry about it. This is not about VLOOKUP. We are going to use DGET, and you don't really have to understand VLOOKUP to be able to use DGET to get the same result. So I'm gonna to try to get the same thing by using DGET function instead of using VLOOKUP. So I'll go here and do equals d get, that's the function, open parentheses. And the first thing in this function is the database table. So when you think about the database table, it has to be a table like this. And to make sure that it's a proper table, you have to make sure that the first row in this table has names for each columns, and those names have to be unique. I'm gonna lock that with F4, comma, and then the next thing is the field. So which field do I want results from? So I want to get the results from price field. So I'm gonna go ahead and type price as text right here, comma, and then the last argument is the criteria. So in this case, the criteria is gonna be this. So I'm gonna select that and close parentheses. If I hit enter, I'm gonna get that same thing, 130. Now, to get back to this, so the price is what we're actually after, this column in our database table. But the criteria is here, basically it's a range of two cells. And the first one, in this case, we're searching in the stock number column. So it's matching the stock number with the stock number over here. And then the actual part number that we're searching right below, that's the range. Now, the cool thing about Google Sheets is this. So this function is available in Excel and it's been in Excel for a long time. But because Google Sheets arrays are so dynamic, you can do a lot of cool stuff using this function. So let me show you what I mean. Instead of doing this, I can actually use an array here. And in my array, I can provide the field that I'm searching it. So that's gonna be stock underscore number, which is basically I'm matching this name of the column where I'm searching right here on top, stock number. And then the actual thing that I'm searching. So what I'm searching is this stock number right there. If I hit enter, this will still work. So I'm gonna get 130, and that is pretty much a replacement for our VLOOKUP. So this is our database table. This is the column where we need the results from. This is the column where we search, and this is what we're searching in that column. And that should get us what we need. Now I can drag this down, and that should get me the price for this one too. All right, so with this, let me show you the difference between doing dget and vlookup. So first of all, let me do this with vlookup really quickly here. So I'm gonna do equals vlookup. I'm gonna search this search key. I'm gonna select the table here. I'm gonna lock the table with a four comma, one, two, three, four, price, comma, zero, close parentheses, hit enter and drag this down. So now you see I get the same result using dget and getting vlookup. So the difference between these two is this. If I had multiple occurrences of this item here in the list, let's say this 430 appears more than once, vlookup will give me the first occurrence and get me the price. dget will actually get you an error, this number error that tells you that there was more than one match found 
and it gives you this error, which I actually like a lot. It gives you a good indication that something is going on. So you should really not have multiple matches. But keep that in mind that it's different in that way. So I'm going to undo this a couple of times to get my data back. And that's the get function. Now I can get any other field. So if I don't want price, I want, for example, the size. All I have to do is just go here and change price to size. And it's going to work. So size 12, just not formatted right. Now I could also get the product name. This is something you wouldn't be able to do with a VLOOKUP in an easy way, at least. So product underscore name, it should match exactly. See, I'm getting the product name using the stock number. So all this type of stuff we can do, we can also link it to whatever's in here. So instead of doing this hard coded field, I can say whatever column I type here on top and I'll lock that with F4. Hit enter and that gets me the price. I'm gonna drag that down. But if I change this price to let's say type, that should get me the type. If I change to product name, that's gonna give me product name. See, so it's very flexible in this way that we can basically just use this deget function. So let me show you this on another example that's very common going here. So we have a couple of tables side by side. We want to basically go pull information from this right table to this left table using this matching stock numbers. So equals the get open parentheses. First, we're going to choose the database. So this is where we're pulling this information from. So I'm going to select that and lock with F4 comma, then which field I want to get information from. So I'm going to say cost, for example, so all the cost, comma, and here we're going to do an array of two elements like this. So I'm going to close parentheses for the get. Now inside of this array, the first thing should be which column we're searching. So we're searching in the stock numbers. That's the common stock number in quotes semicolon here. And then finally, we're searching for this stock number in there. If I enter, let's take a look here, 590. That's the correct price. I'm going to go here and drag this down. And that should get me the price for everything else. Now, if I needed to get more information from this table on the right, what I could do, let me actually add a few columns here, I could just link it to the top of the cell. So what I can do, I can say this should be the coast. And then I can go here instead of typing coast here, I can simply refer to this on top and lock the row number one. I'm not going to lock the column in this case. And I'll show you why I'm going to drag this down. With this, if I take this and drag this, right, the same formula, all I have to do is just type which column I want price. So I did not lock something there. So I'm going to go back and check what I did. I oh I forgot to lock the B column here for the stock numbers. So I'm going to add another dollar sign to lock the column B here. Hit enter again, drag this right and drag it down. And that should get us all the prices and all the costs. And now I should be able to use this formula for any other column from here. So if I also want the type, I can just copy paste the column name. If I want to get whatever else we have here, not much else, that's pretty much it. And double click to drag it down and see it works for all of them. Uh, one thing you can see here, we get this value error. That value error means there was no match found for this four to three item. And as you can see, it's not really in this list. So this is similar to getting that NA error you get in a VLOOKUP. So the final thing I want to go over here is how to do some sort of if error type of statements. And because there are a couple of type of different errors you could have here, if error might not be the best idea, because if you remember we did get, if we have multiple matches, let me create that situation here. Let me just copy this part number and paste it here. 
so that we have two of them. Now we're going to get number error for this one because there are two matches. So for that, first of all, we need to be able to check what type of error this is. So if I use this formula called error type and click on the cell on the left, see there's no errors, so we get an NA. If I drag this down, you'll see that for number error, the type of error is six, and for value error, the type of error is three. What we can do, we can just check if the error type equals to six, that tells us that it's that NA error. So right now, if I drag this down, say I get true, everything else I get false or I get NA, right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take this and say if that is true, so basically if the type of the error is that number error, I'm gonna do a custom message, say more than one match found. Otherwise, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take one divide by zero. So the reason I'm doing that is because one divided by zero is gonna get us an error. So what I'm trying to get, if anything else, I just wanna have an error instead. So I'm gonna do this and drag this down. And that will say more than one match found for this and anything else is either this NA error or this division by zero error. So now I'm gonna take that and put it inside of our if error function. If the result of that is an error, then we want to do whatever's in here, the actual function. So this is gonna get us this. So now we get an error for the actual value errors and for these we get more than one match found. You can handle it any way you like. This is just one way to handle it. I was just trying to show you how do you actually differentiate between different error types if you had to and error type will let you do that. Finally, you would probably not do all of this separately. Instead of doing it here, you would take this dget function, copy it, hit escape, come back here, and I'm gonna replace this e2 paste dget function, the second e2 paste dget function again, and just drag it down to just have one formula. I'm gonna delete this here. And this was supposed to be yeah, we we're referring to this cell and I took that reference off. So I'm gonna just go back and correct this really quickly here. So that should be the first row there. And where's the second one? There it is, it's reference error. Dollar sign for that too. Now here we'll write what column we want. So if this is supposed to be, there was no size apparently, let's try to do type. There we go, drag this down and there we have it. If you didn't have all this data on the right and it was on a different tab, which happens a lot, you would basically just do the same thing from a different tab. So if my data was on this tab and the other data was on this other tab and I was trying to get all this information moved over to my first tab, I would just go here and copy of those column names go to my first tab, paste them, remove this same column, stock number, and those are the columns I'm gonna need. So now I have to do my dget function all over again. So I'll do dget, open parentheses, I need the database, now it's gonna be on the other tab. I'll go here and select the data. I'm gonna do function F4 to lock the range, comma, then which field I want for now type coast, comma, and then do the array. And in the array, the first thing is where we're searching. Now you could either type stock number or I can also just click on the column where I'm searching and do function F4 and semicolon. And what I'm searching for, that's gonna be on my original tab. So I'm gonna go to my merge data tab and click on the stock number on the same row. I hit enter, that gives me the coast. 
I'm going to go back and instead of doing coast here, I'm going to replace it with my reference for coast here, right on top. I'm going to lock the row reference because all of these labels are on the first row. And then I'm going to lock the column reference for B2 because all the stock numbers are in column B. Hit enter and then I should be able to drag this right and drag this down and that should work for the whole thing. And if you want to future proof this for more data, if you're adding more data to your table on the other tab, you can also just remove this row ending reference right here. Just go from A1 through D, something like that and copy your formula over again. And that should basically be it. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.